I'm not trying to waste another year of Stephen Curry. I'm not trying to lose games. But realistically, the approach may be, because Dudley, you said, it's really hard to make a trade. Because it's very difficult. Thing, no, like, it, it, it's, it, it's extremely restrictive. I I don't know. The best, and nobody wants to hear it. Joe Lakeland probably doesn't want to hear it. So he turns huh. 37 next year, Steph Curry. Yep. So, and, and, and look, there is an argument financially to just bottom out. And, and, I'm, and I'm here and I'm willing to listen to it. But there's also the risk of, and going back to the emotion, of disrespecting yep. Steph Curry and not granting his final wishes, and, which, I, again, we could talk look, about Draymond and Clay and how much you owe them, and then there's a whole separate conversation for how much you owe Steph not, Curry. Not only that. I have a hard, just me, if this were a video game and I could simulate two years and keep 38-year-old Steph Curry and I wouldn't have to worry about injuries and all that and develop a player, and yeah, I, it sounds great. I just have a hard time thinking from a business standpoint, Joe Lacob. They're not going to do that. Yeah, is going to do and that. And I said that on the front but end. I, I prefaced I do my think statement. What you're saying I prefaced makes my a lot statement. Of sense. You asked me what I would do. That's some of the things I thought about. But I prefaced my statement saying Joe Lacob's not going to do that. With the All Star Game coming here and with this fan base, nobody's going to. That's not going to happen. It may be the best situation. Maybe Mike Dunleavy knows that, saying, boy, if we could just wait out another year, and this is what it protects now, Steph Curry. You're going to get the clock. You want to maximize the window. I get all that. So it's probably not going to happen. Oh boy, I <sighs> trading a lot of assets for a mid-30 player of Paul George. I just, it doesn't warm me. A couple it doesn't of future, warm me. Let me ask you. So like a it couple of future firsts, just, and this is a hype though. You, you don't give up Kaminga. You give up Moody. Let's say it's CP3 and Wiggins and a couple of a combination of, of I mean, <laughs> future first round picks. That well, that the, is too much. I, for I you? just I just have a hard time when we as a fan base to say Wiggins is nothing. Get him off my team. Wiggins is nothing. Blah 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 blah. People don't even want to talk about Andrew Wiggins. And I expect the Clippers to say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Bring him down to LA. <laughs> like I just have a hard time saying that, man. But I, what is, I but play what is the game. Philly offer <laughs> that's significantly better? I don't know what the Philly their, offer their is. Their first round pick would probably be I, lower than yours, I don't know what as the Philly. in uh, higher. And like, I, what other player are they giving the you? And now look at the Knicks. Like the Knicks have a man, lot of really nice role Philly, players. Philly may be waiting for Paul George to say, you know what, opt out. We'll give you a contract. Absolutely, that's what they, they, they don't have to trade. Absolutely, they, they can could. wait for Paul George to become a free agent and just give them a boatload of money. They're one of the top three teams: OKC, Orlando, and Philadelphia, with the most cap space. They can sit back and say, Paul. George, opt out. We got you. No. Come play with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey being a third option, and we, we'll get a lot more from you than we got from Tobias Harris. That's for damn sure. So they're in a great spot. Great spot. Now the Knicks, they have a lot of role players. Yeah, like, so, like, okay, let's say, in this hypothetical, like, Julius Rand, I'm just, I'm just going these two points, because the way you're talking about Wiggins, you're right. Like, I get what you're saying. But it's not like Julius Randle is some world beater. He's a ball-dominant player that yeah, everyone thinks is flawed, and the Knicks were better when he was off the floor. So, like, all of these trades, it's a bunch of junk. You know well, what I mean? Like, that's that's what a well, lot of these deals end up being. Yeah, and I, I haven't really gotten to the Knicks situation and what they have and what they should trade. I hear a lot of fluff about that. I don't know about the New York Knicks. I'm just kind of focused on what the Warriors can do to get better. Now, Dunleavy, uh, one question that he got asked by Tim Kawakami because – he brought up the youngsters, right? Here's what he said. He was asked about trading possibly Kaminga, Pods, and the rest of the youngsters. For sure. I mean, we really value those guys. We've drafted them. We've grown them. Um, they played really well. Uh, we're excited about them. So, like, a scenario to move them would, would take a lot. Um, it's important for us to, you know, be good now and then be good, be good also in the future. But, like, the main thing is we think those guys can contribute and help our group now. Um, if that was not the case, then we'd be more open to stuff, but it is. And so we're, we're excited for those guys growth this year. And, um, I, I expect them to be with us. Now, Kawakami then followed up and he asked him about what he said last year when it came to Jordan Poole. A year ago, granted, all things change. You did say that you weren't going to, you know, Jordan Poole was going to be on the team, uh, about four days before you traded him. Is this different than that? I don't, again, I, it, to, to be clear, I, I said I expected Jordan to be back on the team next year. And I did at that point. Um, but this thing changes so quickly, um, especially when there's a deadline in place, whether it's a trade deadline, a draft, free agency. Things change like that, so I reserve the right to go back on, or not. I wouldn't say go back because I, 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 I said I didn't expect him to be back, and I, I would stick by that. And I, 
I said, I, I'm sorry. I said, I expect to be back. Like I do all the guys we have in our contract. I really do. Like there's nothing going on right now where I'm like, man, this, this may not happen or whatever. So things can always change. Draft goes on, picks become available, something changes, but on the whole, I feel pretty comfortable with the group that, that we got. Mm. I feel like he's in such a difficult position. It, like it, uh, he did. He said Jordan was going to be on the team and then traded him later. What's he supposed to say? I'm trading Jordan Poole and like, it, not that he had, like well, it's, it's going to change his value dramatically, but like you can't tell someone that you're going to trade an individual out loud. And then what if that trade doesn't materialize for X, Y, and Z reasons, yeah. right? Like, I just think he's in such a difficult spot and he, and he's tripping over his words because the poor guy just, he just, I just think he's in a tough spot. I think a lot of these GMs are in tough spots and we put them at a podium and we just dissect all their words. Well, Here's what he said last year about J.P. Spadoni. Roll it. We love having those guys here. Jordan, especially with his contract extension, plan to have him here for four more years at least. And then Jonathan's, you know what? He's shown really good progression and growth, I think, in his first couple of years. Unfortunately for him, I think the playing time hasn't been there. And so that's on all of our shoulders to figure out how do we get him in the game more. And that's on Jonathan's shoulders to, to improve and make the right adjustments to his game, as well as our front office, our coaching staff, figuring out what, what works. So both those guys, really, really good young players we're pleased with. They have great value around the league. Obviously, a lot of rumors and stuff come up at this time of the year, but um, we're happy with those guys. Okay. He so, said all that. So he said all that. If and I George asked you, Poole was moved a couple days later, and we were all shocked about it. Okay. So... Right now, he says he likes the young guys. What are the chances, percentage-wise, in your opinion? And we're guessing. We're just guessing. Pods, TJD, Moody, and Kaminga are still on this team a month from now. I think they're still on the team right now because of the way the cap is, because of where they're at with the apron. Okay. They have to keep these guys, and they need these guys to be productive. Now, I think they'll listen, and I think the Warriors quietly were fielding phone calls early in the last season. I think it may have started in December where, on well, let me finish, let me finish. The Warriors were filthy calls or at least calling people around saying, hey, who do you like on our team? Like, you think LeBron, the LeBron James trade proposal or the Warriors being interested in LeBron James was the only move they were interested in? They were teams around the league saying, well, the Warriors are in for business. And damn near everybody was on the table. That's what a little birdie told me. Now, when he says that, saying, yeah, you know, Pods and Kaminga and TJD, yeah, we all like them. We feel comfortable with them. Things change in a heartbeat. Like, it just does in the NBA. So what if what if the Clippers now play this game with Paul George? What if the Clippers do say, you know what? We really like Pajewski. And we really like Moses Moody. Is that going to stop the Warriors from trading for Paul George? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think they're so. married to, to these youngsters like that, like they are to Steph Curry. Yeah. So things change. So I would not be shocked that they're not on the team a month from now. But I wouldn't be shocked if they were on the team a month from now because of the situation. <laughs> so what's the percentage in. you're putting it at? I don't. I'm not putting on a percentage. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. What I is would say happen seventy-five with Wiggins? percent. Uh, my guess is, and this is just a guess. I'm going to say seventy-five percent that 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 those four players are not all four of them on the team a month. So from one now. of them gets. So one of them. One of them, one of them I think moved? one of them is involved. Moody or Kaminga is if I had wow. to choose. Wow. 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 I think they really like pods. But again, to your point, like in the right deal, like again, it's like, like I, I really like Kirk Cousins. But if Tom Brady's available, you know what I mean? Like that's how right. I, I view this. And, and I don't think Tom Brady is available for the Warriors. But uh, yeah, I would say that if I had to guess, I would say one of the Moody or Kaminga guys gets gets dealt yeah. in it's, either a small, medium or large deal. It's possible. Uh, Dunleavy, I'll make a trade in today's NBA. It's just hard to do deals, you know? I mean, I can't stress that enough. Like, there's a lot of good teams out there that know what they're doing, whereas in the past, it just seemed like you could you could pull one, a fast one on somebody, and there's different reasons for doing a trade. Now, it's it's hard. Like, there's salary-related trades, but how often do you see a trade that's like straight basketball for basketball? And so, because of that, it's just not easy. But at the same time, we know here, um, so some, some good teams have been built based on, like, you know, getting an Andrew Wiggins in a trade, something like that. So um, got to keep pursuing those things, but recognizing you, um, they're not always easy. So there's no, not that many suckers in the NBA anymore. There's not that many. We got a good deal with Caruso and uh, Giddy. I think this is a win-win for both sides. I understand where both sides are coming from when it comes to that deal, but 
There's no no more suckers in the NBA? On that Giddy deal, it is interesting. Like a year ago, Giddy was like, oh, no way they're getting rid of him. They're going to max all these guys out. And, and and I like Giddy. I think as a player, I think he's, he's a solid player. And then the playoffs happened, and it's like, whoa, OKC couldn't unsee it. And, and they needed mm-hmm. to tinker things up and switch it. And it's just interesting for, I thought heading into, and it's a good trade for them. Um, clearly, Chicago doesn't want to pay Caruso moving forward. Right. But like, in my mind, I was like, I thought Giddy would be even more coveted. Yeah, no, but he, you know, the you playoffs see the fit, happened. The playoffs happened. The Bulls jumped out of maybe the OKC Thunder so low. I, maybe they sold low before the draft and said, you know what, yeah. let's strike right on Caruso right away. But with the Warriors, I find it really hard for them. Boy, if Paul George, ugh, you're I, just I really out him. on that move. Huh? No, I, I like Paul George. I just I'm looking at the future here. Over the next two years, does Paul George make the Warriors that much better? Now the rest of the roster has to be filled out. Obviously, you got other moves to make. Maybe it looks better all around. Maybe it looks better with the Paul George and Draymond and Steph Curry. I don't see it happening. But then again, I didn't see Chris Paul happening with the Golden State Warriors. It's true. And that shocked the hell out well, of me. What about KD? Does that do it for you? Because there's a lot of rumors with KD that he might be out. I, I, I put him similar to the Paul George thing where like he's got flaws too. Well, we know what KD is all about. He does get buckets, though. We know what KD is all about. Now, is that rumor starting again, KD? Well, uh, Mark Willard yesterday said that that's his number one target. Oh. I, I live with these people. I'm not mad I at love that. these people. Yeah. They're part of my family. Sure. I, I just think they have to do something. Sure. I mean, yeah, I think everybody knows they have to do something. But it does feel, Never, I mean, to, to circle back on the Giants right. analogy, this does feel more like an Evan Longoria desperation exactly. overpay. Yeah. yeah but, but like, I, let's remember, you, a lot of people were in on the Evan Longoria deal. I, I wanted him. him. I wanted you him. Know? So, I, like, that was one of my does, great predictions. It does more feel like that than like a Hunter Pence trade. My Evan Longoria prediction was great. What was it? It was like three weeks before it happened. It was like, you know, the Giants need to kick the tires on Evan Longoria. Forget about a Tampa Bay. Now, it didn't work out, but you got to swing. That's, you got to swing. I just feel like so the, the I, Warriors are up against it. Listen, listen. I think everybody knows at the end of the day, bottom line, whether Clay's here or not, whether PG's here or not, we all agree. The Warriors need to make moves if they want to get back into the hierarchy of the Western Conference. They got to swing big, but maybe that big move ain't there. So what if that big move isn't there? What do you do now? 